Today we're painting another scene and we're going to be focusing on edges and how we use different techniques to create different edges with watercolor. And in fact, I'm going to link to a tutorial that gives you some drills to work with edges if you look at the description of this video. This is our subject and actually I'm not sure where it is. It's a beautiful photo, dramatically lit, looking at the photo. We give it a chance to think a little bit how we're going to use edges. When we see soft edges in nature, that translates into wet, into wet technique. When we see bright, sharp edges, that can be dry technique. And when we see um, uh, solid shapes, that's usually on dry paper as well. So this, we're going to start with an exercise in black and white. The, doing the, the exercise in black and white really is enabling in many ways and I really encourage uh, the student to um, do a small version of black and white before thinking of uh, before moving on to a color subject. This allows you to really focus your attention on the media much more so than if you're trying to match color. You think about values and you think more about what's going on with timing and what's what's happening on the surface of the paper. In this case, you saw um, just moments ago, I started with the graded wash all the way to the horizon. And while this wash is wet, I'm switching the brush to a smaller brush and starting to place some real dark, thick paint into that wet area uh, to create the clouds. And the clouds are basically a pattern and this pattern, um, in thinking about how to represent the clouds, look towards the top of the sky. You'll see the clouds are bigger and darker. Uh, they have a rise to them coming up from the, they go from a lower right-hand side to a higher right-hand side, very indicative of the ocean, clouds over the ocean. And as they move towards the horizon, they're getting uh, flatter and they're getting smaller and they're getting lighter so in thinking about creating the pattern of the clouds of course you can try and paint them exactly but if you're in nature you're gonna have to improvise and I think it's something worthwhile uh, to get used to is this improvising with patterns the clouds move from a, a the bigger size to the smaller size on the horizon they get lighter they get smaller and in fact on the horizon you notice they're practically blending into the horizon. And while I've been talking, I've been applying a lot of dry brush, working on dry paper with a, a brush that has, you know, a minimal amount of pigment on it. And I pull it along the paper, leaving a lot of dry, broken strokes. This translates, this becomes a shining light, shimmering light on the water. And uh, as we surround uh, the water with stones, these rising stones coming up off the water's surface, the shallow water, we can focus on some of those whites that we've left and make them come forward or make them into a splashing wave. And that's what I'm doing now. And as I place these uh, stones, of course, I'm watching the photograph and <coughs> I really can't help to try and copy them, but I'm translating it a bit in the in in the way that I'm transitioning the stones. So they're getting a little lower as they move further back and paler. That's a, a big part of it. They get paler uh, as they retreat and as they come forward, as we're doing now, these stones, uh, they can get larger, more massive, more bulky, and they definitely get darker. So I'm thickening up the paint. I'm invoking some dry brush into the stones, uh, working on very dry paper, and building up these big shapes, these big shapes of the stones. So uh, placement, uh, I'm pretty much following the paper. I thought it was a really beautiful composition that the photographer achieved, and just emulating that. This is an exercise. It's not something that I would put into an exhibition. Um, but it's an exercise in edges. Let's use this subject to think about our watercolor, how we're going to 
um, use the paper, the wetness of the paper, to create soft washes as in the sky, or as I'm doing now into the reflections, or the dry paper to create the dry brush effect across the water. And the paper too is also dry and so that I can get a real firm, sharp edge to these stones. So the condition of the paper, the condition of the brush, play a big role in how we achieve water, uh, different edges in watercolor. And to finalize the painting, of course, we put a couple seagulls and you notice they have a, a profound effect on the visual integrity of the image. They really push back against these stones and uh, are very effective. We're not through yet. We're going to do a two color version of the same painting. Um, playing more with color. In fact, this is the benefit of using two colors. In this case, I'm using burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And these pigments are sometimes mixed on the palette, as you see now. At other times, they will be mixed on the paper directly. In, I'll take a brush load of ultramarine blue, apply it to the paper, and then I'll scrub some burnt sienna into it. The effect is very different. You can see a sort of generic gray being achieved by these two colors that were mixed on the palette. Again, uh, we get to repeat this technique of working dry into wet. The paper is very wet, giving us those soft edges for our clouds, big shapes at the top. And as they come down, they're getting a little smaller. Also, there I'm adding a little bit of water and uh, a little white paint. The white paint helps it helps the stroke from expanding too much. So <clears throat> this um, the same technique of a pattern is applied rising clouds off of the horizon blending into the horizon as they recede. Um, this sky should not take you more than a minute or two. You place that large graded wash first and then follow it with the dry into wet clouds. So, and it's a very quick process and you're actually, you're working against the clock because that wash, the, the wash that you're working into is drying. So it, um, it pays to mix up the paint before you even start the wash, be ready for it. And as soon as you start, you have to think about finishing it because it's drying pretty fast. As a side note, one thing that can help you is a bottle, which uh, a spray bottle, that can send a light mist to the wash without really disfiguring the wash. It can keep it wet enough to work on without carrying a brush full of water to it. Dry brush into the ocean. Uh, you see a lot of uh, shimmering waves being created a lot of empty white paper, and then a lot of these dry brush strokes to create the surface of the water. And these translate into uh, highlights on the water, glitter, glittering, shining waves, or surface of the water. And a you can also modify them a little bit to turn into waves or crashing waves. It depends how you shape uh, the bottom of these rocks that we're placing. If it's a flat, uh, bottom, it's going to read as a calm ocean. If you <clears throat> decide, as we will, to uh, make it a jagged edge on the bottom, you can create the illusion of a wave crashing on the ro rock. And one thing that I'm keen on in this painting is to get a connection from that upper light the light in the upper part of the sky and the light that's falling across the water. It's almost a direct line. This is a very descriptive of the moment of the light breaking through the clouds and glittering on the water in front. And so a connection between them is, is uh, considered as I'm creating the wash behind in the sky, light to dark on the horizon. And also as I'm uh, shaping the highlight with the dry brush work that's in the foreground. Well, we're going to get into an example of, of more color mixing now on the paper. Look at that strong blue, it's completely out of place. But when we mix in some brown, some burnt sienna, 
this will settle the blue it'll uh, eventually work its way into a gray but the what remains is some hint of that color some essence of that color as well as the uh, burnt sienna that's being mixed into it with the particular camera angle i don't think you can appreciate it but you'll see it more in the dried version soft edges in the clouds rough edges in the water firm edges sharp edges in the rocks some lost and found edges uh, through the clouds and through the the stones as well more and as i'm building up these stones i'm conscious of trying to keep them dark so i'm almost picking up paint right from the tube <coughs> right from the tube of, of um, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and mixing the colors on the paper with a small brush giving me a lot of control letting me shape this uh, the stone and now as i work on the bottom i think you can see a, a wave appearing it, it's very dependent on how we shape the bottom of the rock uh, we can create this feeling that a, a wave is kind of coming up and and uh, striking the bottom of the stone look at the left hand side it's a little clearer anyway more darks a little bit of neutral tint into those rocks and now some reflections painted in the same manner where we're adding a strong colorful pigment basically two colors the burnt sienna the ultramarine blue and hints there and here and there of a um, neutral tint and then uh, creating a, a variety of, of interesting grays as we mix the two colors on the paper so it's the same subject treated in a slightly different way using two colors and again this is a this is a method or a, let's call it a practice uh, that separates you from thinking about matching color all the time it's a big plus because when you're matching color you, you're you don't think about the technique as much you don't think about what's going on with the paper you don't think about um, what's happening with the media uh, we tend to become more obsessed about matching color and this is not a good mindset a better mindset is to work with a limited palette think about tonalities and really pay attention what's happening with the media especially when we're working with edges